So Babylon the Great is finally destroyed in this chapter. There's nothing left of it. And this is the world system that is presently here today. Because we know in the book of Daniel, there was the gold head, which was Babylon. Then there was the two arms, which was the Medo-Persian Empire, which followed the Babylonian Empire. And then there was the belly and the thighs of bronze or brass, which was the Grecian Empire. And then the two long legs of iron was the Roman Empire. The book of Daniel showed us all that, right? But it's one image moving forward in time. And that one image moving forward in time is the world, the world system, the world economic system. Um, It's the world culture, the world religion, and it's moving forward in time. And God is a about to deal with it, my friends. And he's about to destroy it because the feet is that last little empire and Jesus destroys that image and it falls down to the ground like powder and the rock is who he is and that rock becomes a mountain in his kingdom for a thousand years here on earth and then forever after that, the new heaven and the new earth. But first, Jesus will rule and reign from Jerusalem, right? As those Old Testament scriptures said, and those prophets and all those different things, they promised a, a, a reign of the Messiah here on earth, and it's going to happen. And we're going to see that here in the book of Revelation. So here we're going to see the final destruction of Babylon. You're not going to see Babylon anymore. It's done. This is the Babylon is the world system, economically, spiritually, all that, and it's going to be destroyed, and Jesus' kingdom is coming to rule and reign. In fact, the whole earth, it says that nature itself, creation itself, groans and waits and is just yearning for the Messiah to come and restore this earth and restore all things. It's an amazing thing, you guys, and I can't wait for it myself. I am I am groaning and waiting for my Lord to come back too. But that day will come, but right now we serve him faithfully, not successfully all the time, but faithfully. And that's our job as Christians. All right, let's get into the scripture, you guys. Here, Revelation 18, it starts with, After these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated from his glory. Oh my gosh, can you imagine that? It's like the sun that illuminates the earth. This angel's that bright. He just, like sunshine, brightens up the whole earth. Whoa. It's like day all of a sudden, right? It was dark. Remember the plagues that just happened in the previous chapters? Now all of a sudden it's light. An angel does that. That's just an angel. That's not God. That's just an angel. (laughs) Wow. Amazing stuff. All right. Let's continue in the scripture. And he cried out with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit and a prison of every unclean and hateful bird. And that's another word for demons. So, for all the nations have fallen because of the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed acts of sexual immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich from the excessive wealth of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive any of her plagues. Uh, For her sins have piled up as high as heaven, and God has remembered her offenses. Pay her back, even as she has paid, and give her Give to her double according to her deeds in the cup which she has mixed mixed twice as much for her. So this world system has been persecuting and killing God's people, the Christians. It's even today, it's been killing and aborting these precious little babies that God creates in the womb. This is serious stuff, you guys. I'm not afraid to talk about it. A lot of Christians are afraid, oh gosh, don't don't talk about abortion and Roe v. Wade and all this stuff because that's political. Get some backbone, guys. Grow a backbone, will you? Be courageous. Be willing to lay your life down if you have to and be unpopular if you have to. Lose your job, whatever it is, for the sake of Jesus Christ because God loves the babies, okay? And this world system right now hates babies if they get in the way of of your career or other things like that. 
These are precious human beings, okay? They're babies. I, one of my friends at work was actually telling me that there's a woman who's saying that she can ride, drive in the HOV lane, right? The carpool lane and the freeway because she's pregnant. There's two. There's two human lives in that car. She's right. And I think pregnant women should have the right to drive in that lane because, yes, there are two lives there. But the point of it is, guys, God is going to give this world system that's been killing babies for a long time, he's going to give them what they deserve. And here in this great tribulation period, they're going to be killing believers. Living Christians are going to be killing them too, adult Christians, and God's going to give them what they deserve. And here this angel is pronouncing that, you guys. Pretty powerful stuff. All right, so let's continue in the scripture, you guys. So pay her back even as she has paid, and she's going to get double here. And then verse 7, to the extent that she has glorified herself and lived luxuriously, luxuriously, excuse me, to the same extent, give her torment and mourning. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I am not a widow and I will never see mourning. For this reason, in one day, her plagues will come, plague and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire for, sh- for the Lord God who judges her is strong. And the kings of the earth who committed acts of sexual immorality and lived luxuriously with her will weep and mourn over her when they see the smoke of her burning. Whoa. Standing at a distance because of the fear of her torment, saying, Woe, woe, the great city Babylon, the strong city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargo anymore. You know, when I first read this when I was a believer, I thought it was the speaking of the United States, because we buy the junk from all over the world, do we not? Cargo ships come in full and they leave empty, pretty much. And uh, that's what I thought, but, and I thought it was like a nuclear war because the destruction comes in one hour and the merchants the uh, of the great cargo ships wept because of it, but they turned back. Could be, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it's the United States. I, I believe it's speaking of this tribulation period kingdom that comes only for seven years, right? It's like those feet in that statue of Daniel. The Bible explains the Bible, right? We go to the book of Daniel. But the feet were the smallest, the shortest amount of time, like the long iron legs would be the Eastern and Western Roman Empire, which really is our system today for the most part. But this last kingdom is like a mix of Iron, the Roman Empire, mixed with another empire of clay. And that one is a short amount of time, and then it's destroyed. It says in in Daniel that a rock was cut out without human hands, thrown across the heaven, and that rock hits the feet and destroys that entire image, that statue, to powder. And that rock becomes the kingdom of God here on earth. So that's what we see here, guys. And first century Christians reading this book of Revelation would have thought that this was speaking of Rome or the Roman Empire because of the luxury. They understood this clearly. And um, and sure, it's it's like today, right? It's like our Western world today, pretty much. Pretty interesting stuff. I don't know everything about this. I Some things I just don't know, you guys, are mysteries to today. I'd be a fool to claim I did know, but it's good to read this stuff. Anyway, this is the Word of God, and this book comes with a promise. We're promised that we will be blessed as we go through this book and read it together. So let's continue, guys, in the Scriptures. So, and the merchants weep and they mourn over her because no one buys their junk, their cargo anymore. (laughs) It's not junk, actually. Their cargo of gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls, fine linen, purple silk, and scarlet, every kind of citron wood. Citron wood was used to make cabinets in the Roman Empire. So first century believers understood what this was. This was a very sought-after precious wood to them. And every article of ivory and every article made from very valuable wood, bronze, iron, and marble. Cinnamon spice... Uh, incense, perfume, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, and cargo of horses, carriages, slaves, and human lives. There was a lot of slaves, right? A lot of human slaves during the Roman Empire. 
So many people believe that this was the fulfillment of that empire being destroyed. But however, guys, in our time, we're seeing slaves, human trafficking again in a big way. So this could speak of our time or the pretty soon the future of our time it could be. And then verse 14 continues, the fruit you long for has left you and all the things that were luxurious and splendid have passed away from you and people will no longer find them. The merchants of these things will become rich. Who became rich from her will stand at a distance because of the fear of her torment, weeping and mourning, saying, woe, Whoa, the great city, she who was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and adorned with gold, precious stones and pearls in one hour. Kind of seems like nuclear war, does it not? In one hour, such great wealth had been laid waste. And every shipmaster and every passenger and sailor and all who make their living by the sea stood at a distance and were crying out as they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like the great city? You know, I have to say it, it reminds me of 9-11 a little bit. You know, there was that great smoke and the two twin towers, like the legs of that statue were crumbled down to dust. And people mourned, people didn't want to get near it because of fear of the the dust itself being toxic. There was a little picture of that there, you guys, I think. But this is on a worldwide scale, much bigger, uh, greater scale, I believe. And they were crying out as they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads and were crying out, weeping and mourning, saying, Whoa, whoa, the great city in which all who had ships at sea became rich from her prosperity, for in one hour she has been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven. Wow. So heaven rejoices about this. And you saints and apostles and prophets, because God has pronounced judgment for you against her. What is that about? Well, this world system has been persecuting God's people for a long time, has it not? And now they are, this world system is judged, rightfully so, and God puts an end to it. And and the saints can rejoice about it. Then a strong angel picked up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence, and will never be found again. And the sound of harpists, musicians, flute players, and trumpeteers will never be heard in you again, and no craftsman of any craft will ever be found in you again. And the sound of a mill will never be heard in you again. And the light of a lamp will never shine in you again, and the voice of the groom and the bride will never be heard in you again. For your merchants were the powerful people of the earth, because all the nations were deceived by your witchcraft. Whoa, God doesn't mix any words there. He's just straight up saying the reason for it all right here. And also, remember Jesus said that his return would be like the days of Lot. What was that like? Well, we know that Sodom and Gomorrah was completely destroyed, right? It was completely destroyed because of the sin that just, it was just too much. It was just going to get worse and worse and worse, and God had to put an end to it. So there's a picture of Babylon there as well in that in that scenario when Jesus talked about it in Matthew chapter 24 about his return. So let's continue in the scriptures, you guys. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints. And here the footnote says, holy ones, God's people, the holy ones. That's what saints are, you and me. If you're a believer in Jesus, you're a holy one to God. You're precious in his sight. And of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. So Babylon is done. It is through 
This is it. You're not going to see it anymore. It's gone after this. And this will be fulfilled just like everything else that God said will be fulfilled in the Bible and that has been fulfilled. The rest of it that hasn't will. It'll happen, you guys. It's a promise from God. And God doesn't break his promises. (laughs) All right, so... This speaks, I believe, this Babylon speaks of this world system, like that statue in Daniel, destroyed, and then God's kingdom comes. And this is exciting, guys, because the next chapter, you're going to see Yeshua Mashiach, or Jesus Christ. Mashiach means Messiah. Yeshua is Jesus in Hebrew. So Jesus, Messiah. And in the Greek, it's Jesus Christ. Christ is Messiah in the Greek. So he will come in the next chapter and establish his kingdom. But what he does is he just shows up, And the beast, which is the Antichrist, and the false prophet are dealt with. They're bound up and they're thrown into the lake of fire. And Jesus' kingdom is established here on earth. And that dragon, Satan, he's bound for a thousand years in the abyss with a great chain. And God doesn't even get off his throne. He just has an angel go handle him. A lot of people think that Satan's over here, God's over here. They're equal powers fighting. No way. No, not at all. Not even close. God doesn't even get out of the throne. He has an angel go deal with him, ties him up, and then eventually he ends up in the lake of fire with the beast, the false messiah, and the false prophet, and all those who choose to follow them in hell. And God created hell for them, not for people. But if people reject God, reject Jesus, and don't receive him and want to be his enemy, God will give them what they want. But you don't want that, my friend. You don't want to go to hell. (laughs) That's not a... That's not a pretty picture. It's a place of torment, the Bible says, forever and ever and ever. Or you could be in paradise forever and ever and ever with Jesus and with the Father and with his people. And that's your choice. You have to make that decision, my friend. And if you'd like to choose him, you can do so right now. If you feel sorrow in your heart about your sin, and you want to repent and turn to God and become one of his children, you can do that. You could say this prayer after me. You're praying from your heart to God. Okay? Just repeat these words after me if you want to be saved and become a child of God through Jesus Christ. All right? Pray this prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. I choose to turn from my sin and to turn to you. I believe that you died on that cross, Jesus. I believe that you shed your blood for me. And I believe that in three days you're raised from the dead and you are alive today. I choose to follow you as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my friend. Welcome to the family of God. You are one of his now, and you will live forever and ever with him in paradise. Hey, make sure you plug into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church or fellowship. Make sure you're getting fellowship with other believers every day. Make sure you read your Bible and you pray every day. All right, God bless you, my friend. We're going to get into Revelation chapter 19 next time. I'm so excited seeing Jesus as victor and coming to rule and reign on this earth. All right, you guys. I love you guys. God bless you. Have a great night.